Hello, I'm Rob Faulkner, Technical Authority at Smoothwall. I'm talking to you today about how to execute digital safeguarding on remote devices. This is a webinar for IT professionals within schools, FE colleges and multi-academy trusts. It's a practical guide that will take you through the steps needed to ensure digital safety on these remote devices. And just to say before we get started, Smoothwall is offering some of the solutions I'm going to tell you about free of charge until the end of the school year. And we'll talk about that more at the end. So why remote devices and why now? With the majority of people in lockdown, schools are having to rapidly respond to new ways of learning. Remote learning is of course greatly enhanced with digital devices. And to assist with this, the DfE has announced this week that they will be providing free devices for vulnerable children across the UK. As we know, any school device uh, that a student uses needs to, at a minimum, be filtered to protect them from harm, but also to comply with keeping children safe in education. But in this lockdown period, we've seen new and emerging risks that make digital safety more critical than ever before. The National Crime Agency has reported that paedophiles are actively looking to exploit the coronavirus lockdown. They've identified offenders discussing opportunities to abuse children during the crisis in chats online. And police are warning of a spike in abuse with schools closed and youngsters using their own unprotected devices. We also recognise that children that were perhaps in difficult situations prior to lockdown are even more vulnerable now. So we clearly need to ensure their well-being. So in summary, more re remote devices plus new and emerging threats, risks and so on it equals an imperative to ensure that digital safety is deployed to the best of our ability. So when we talk about digital safety, what are we referring to? So with filtering, when we talk about filtering, we're talking about a real-time capability that blocks harmful content the second it goes live on the internet. Uh, no delays whatsoever. The cheap filters on the market uh, work from block lists and have a lag of days or in some cases even months before they can detect and block harmful content. And a filter that exposes a child to harmful content even for one second is too long in our opinion. So filtering is the first element of digital safety and it's important to make that distinction between a good and a bad filter. If you'd like more information and an online walkthrough of our filter, please let us know using the details that we'll give you at the end. The second element is active monitoring or also known as digital monitoring. This sits on the student's device and alerts the digital safeguarding lead, the DSL, to a child that might be at risk of harm suggested by their online activity, search behaviour, how they use certain applications on that device, and this might even be while that device is offline. If they attempt to view, for example, self-harm websites, or they're talking in a forum about negative feelings, or maybe if they're even writing about harmful intentions in a Word document, even if they don't save it, if a risk is detected, monitoring will pick that up, and a human moderation team here at Smoothwall decides if it's a risk worthy of contacting the school about. Monitoring is an additional pair of eyes and ears for the DSL, and it really makes these invis invisible dangers visible to the school and enables DSLs to concentrate on getting help to children that need it as quickly as possible. In 2019, Smoothwall's human moderation team identified a serious risk to a child's health or life every three minutes. These are real dangers that might otherwise have gone unnoticed. And again, if you'd like an informal walkthrough of the monitoring solution, just let us know um, at the end. Next is digital record management or record keeping. And Smoothall's product is called Safeguard Record Manager. If your school is still using paper-based records for safeguarding concerns, you're going to find it very difficult to record and share these issues while everyone is in lockdown. An online system is very easy to access with proper security and permissions and allows teachers to log concerns and DSLs to track the chronology and behaviour patterns of students that might be at risk. For example, while your school community is at home, if a teacher receives an email from a student or has perhaps been on a Zoom call and something hasn't looked or sounded quite right, 
the teacher can log that in the record keeping portal and the DSL can be alerted. Uh, that might be something significant on its own, or it might be the amalgamation of several smaller incidents that when viewed together reveal a picture of risk that in a paper-based system might have gone unnoticed. Uh, and this is a really important point of value here about using an online system. Um, also, if you use SmoothWall's monitoring system, uh, it integrates with the record management system so that risk detected online from the monitoring uh, can show up automatically in the child's record to help build that picture. But yeah, suffice to say, you know, paper-based records are not sufficient in normal times, but in lockdown they are hugely inadequate and could be jeopardising your students' welfare. So those are our definitions of the tools. Let's move on to look at how we execute and deploy those. So there are four main stages of an execution process across remote devices. Step one being to acquire these devices. Step two, deploy. Step three, engage colleagues as needed. And step four, to manage and maintain those after deployment. So firstly, acquiring the devices. Uh, there's three main ways that we see. Uh, the first one, as we mentioned, the Department for Education have announced these free devices to go to vulnerable um, and uh, disadvantaged students. Um, so we expect to hear more about that over the coming weeks. Uh, secondly, you might look to deploy existing laptops and devices that you might have in, in laptop trolleys and things like that to students. And thirdly, you might look at uh, aging desktops, laptops, that can be repurposed with tools like Neverware, which can convert them into a Chrome operating system. Uh, we've been in touch with Neverware and they're offering a discount on their conversion tools for UK schools. And we'll put up that address at the end where you can get more information. So now we have the device, how do we deploy tools? So content filtering and monitoring, these are essentially delivered in the same way. They start off with IT because IT need to actually get this software installed onto these devices so that they can filter the network traffic and monitor what's on the screen and what the students are typing. Once that's been deployed, you can provide a login to DSLs and the safeguarding team for them to review the alerts that are being raised or perhaps adjust the policies within them with the help of IT. But IT still have an ongoing responsibility to make sure that the software is correctly installed and continues to operate. So how do you actually install it onto these devices? Well, you can do this uh, firstly using Chrome extensions, so this is very straightforward if your school's already in the Google Education ecosystem and their Chrome devices. If they're Windows based, you can use Group Policy or Intune as the more kind of modern cloud-based way of deploying software. If you're Mac-based, uh, there are many MDMs available to help you there. For record management, this is less about the remote devices and more about creating and setting up that hub for teachers to uh, report these alerts and for DSLs to analyse what's coming through. Uh, this sits within an online portal, so it's simply a, a case of setting up users so that they can log in. One thing you need to consider though is how you handle legacy historical records. If they're paper based you might need to scan and import them. If they're in another system you might need to do a kind of export import process there. But don't be put off by this workload. The most important thing is that you have a way to log and manage concerns remotely from now onwards. Getting your record keeping system live and working now is, is critical and then perhaps you can look to import legacy records over the summer. Step three, engaging colleagues. You know, filtering usually stays within IT, so wider engagement isn't essential, although it can be useful to engage DSLs in that process. For monitoring, you'll need to introduce your DSL to the monitor dashboard, and that's something we would assist with during that deployment. For record keeping, you'd need to distribute logins to DSLs and teachers. You may decide to use your DSLs as the, the kind of point of distribution, or you might decide to manage it from within IT. Uh, there's no right or wrong way, whatever works best for you. 
And then step four, post-launch management and maintenance. Um, so once they're acquired, technology's loaded, reporting set up and everyone's engaged, the final step is to maintain them. So this means that ensuring that not only have they got the tools correctly installed, but they're running correctly, there's no errors reported, uh, it's obviously crucial to make sure you're getting the correct report data and alerts back from those remote devices. So how can we help? Smoothwall are the UK's leader when it comes to digital safety. Our priority right now is to help you all we can to protect the students in your care, wherever they may be. We're providing two of these digital safety technologies, Cloud Filter and Record Manager, free of charge until the end of the school year. We're also offering our digital classroom tool, Classroom Manager, free as well. And we're extending the free evaluation phase of our monitoring product as well. All the products we've talked about today are rapid cloud-based deployment, so it can be obviously deployed very quickly without needing to be physically present in front of that device. But we are of course here to help and guide you along that process, whether that's through live chat, phone, email, video conference. Uh, in addition to this we've got our architects and implementation engineers on standby to help. We're all based here in the UK and we're ready to help you whenever and however you need it. So four key takeaways in summary. Um, firstly, a need for better remote learning means, of course, there are more remote devices needed. DfE is providing some of these devices and we talked about some of the other ways that you might obtain them as well. A rise in remote devices coupled with this worrying increase in the volume of predators targeting children means digital safety on these devices is critically important. Deploying digital safety on these devices is straightforward and we're here to help with that. We're providing these tools free of charge until the end of the school year and that includes any time that's needed from our engineering and technical teams to assist you with that. So to arrange an online walkthrough of any of these solutions, to ask any questions at all or to take advantage of these free trials, please do get in touch today. Uh, you can use the email address on screen or through any of our social channels. We're here to help, so please get in touch. Thank you.